G'day, Tim Kerrin here from the Boron Up Carry Forest, as displayed on the TV in my office here in Mortgage Choice in Kingsley. I want to talk today about three things that are changing that may not have hit your radar, or if they have, maybe what you've seen or what you've heard is a little bit confusing. I'm hoping to just clarify a few things, um, and hopefully that helps you assess the situation. The first is the First Home Loan Deposit Scheme, which, if you're not familiar with it, is a scheme where the government guarantees some of the debt a lender lends to you so that they can lend you 95%, or in the case of single parents, 98% of the purchase price of a property without having to take out a mortgage insurance policy to protect themselves against the risk of lending such a high percentage of the property's value. And that means you don't have to pay the mortgage insurance, which, long story short, means you don't need as much deposit. So the scheme has been helping people get a good deal, uh, an interest rate that they otherwise wouldn't have had access to, with less deposit than they would have otherwise needed to get a higher interest rate. Basically, it works really well for people struggling to come up with enough deposit. The scheme has had, if I recall correctly, since the start of last year, a lot of, a lot of water has passed under the bridge since then, um, three sets of 10,000 places being issued uh, to participate in the scheme. Um, the main one that appears to have had uptake is the aspect of the scheme where you're buying established property and you're not a single parent. Um, and the three lenders I've been sending most of my customers to who use the scheme recently have all announced in the last few weeks that there's no more places available to use that aspect of the scheme. So if you are hoping to buy an established property with the first home loan deposit scheme and you're not a single parent, then that ship appears to have sailed. They're not accepting new applications for it anymore. If you are a single parent, there's a new aspect of the scheme that was announced in the May budget that allows a lender to go up to 98%, which means you only need to come up with the other 2% plus the fees required to buy a property. So if you're a single parent, um, that's still available and that's the sort of situation that can make a massive difference to somebody compared to if the scheme didn't exist. So if you know somebody that's a single parent, parent wanting to get into the property market and maybe thinks they don't have a chance, now might be their only chance. Now might be a really good opportunity for them to take a look at it. So feel free to get them in front of me or on the phone to me so we can have a chat and see whether it is something we can do for them. Um, it could make a big difference to their lives. So yeah, keep that in mind. The other third aspect of the scheme is construction. So construction is 95, so you would need the other 5% plus fees to, to put in yourself. Um, and there's still places available for that. So if you're buying established as a single parent or if you're constructing as a single parent or not a single parent, there are still places left. But if you're not a single parent and you want to buy established, then that ship has sailed, I would think. The second thing is the interest rate buffer that's just changed from 2.5% to 3%. What that is, is when lenders are assessing home loan applications, they're required to add on 2.5% on top of whatever rate they're going to give you when they're assessing your ability to repay it to make sure that if the rate went up by 2.5%, you'd still be able to afford it. That rule's just been changed to 3 so now lenders are required to assess at at least 3% above the actual rate. The reality at the moment for long and complicated reasons that are mainly legacy um, and also prudence um, is that most lenders are assessing at more than 3% above that actual rate anyway. So in the case of the two lenders I can think of that have announced the rule change they're making, um, it'll make virtually no difference to people's borrowing capacity with them. So in most situations, this change won't really make a difference at the moment. When we do enter an interest rate environment where rates start to move up and the assessment rate therefore moves up, based on a buffer above the actual rate, um, that extra percent will start to come into play um, and affect people's borrowing capacity. Borrowing, people's borrowing capacity will go down by a little bit more than it otherwise would have because of that. So over the long term, it will mean that it's just a little bit harder to get your home loan um, than it otherwise would have been. Um, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen some regulation make that be true in the last five or six years. This is just another one. Uh, but this is in practice a relatively minor one. Um, and I can't think of any customers right now that would be affected by that. There could have been other ways that they that they executed what they were concerned about um, and dealt with what they're concerned about, but given what they were concerned about, I think this is a pretty measured approach to dealing with that concern. Um, and surprise, surprise, it won't make much difference as a result. The third thing is interest rates in general. So when COVID hit, the fixed rates uh, fell dramatically and suddenly there was a huge difference between variable and fixed rates and so a lot of people chose to fix where traditionally they probably would have chosen a variable rate line simply because it was going to save them so much interest. 
Fixing, however, comes with restrictions. You generally are restricted on how much extra you can repay into a fixed rate loan. Um, if you do pay that extra, you're restricted on, on accessing it again during the fixed period, and you generally can't link an offset account to a fixed rate loan. So people that wanted that flexibility were typically, typically splitting their loan in two, have been, um, so that they could fix the large chunk of their loan um, and get the benefit of the, be of the low rate, and then have a smaller chunk variable so they could get the benefit of the flexibility. That has seemed like a really good idea for a good 18 months now, but what I've started to notice over the last month or so is that variable rates have gradually been trickling down to the point where some people are now deciding, you know what, fixed is probably a little bit cheaper, but I'd rather have the flexibility of variable. I'll just make the whole thing variable and keep it simple. So there are some variable rates out there now that are compelling enough that people are deciding not to bother fixing. So that's interesting to see. Um, and it tells me, long story short, that the people with the money, lenders, and the people they're borrowing it from, probably see a fair bit of stability on the horizon and not too much change between uh, fixed and variable rates going forward. Um, just to add a bit of weight to that, I've also seen in the last few weeks um, a few fixed rates starting to move up. So we're at this point where variable and fixed rates look like they're going to kind of meet sometime soon. At least that's what it looks like to me, and I'm not the one that gets to make these decisions. Um, but my customers do every day, and I'm watching them go through it. If uh, you would like help going through that yourself and making that decision with my guidance, please feel free to get hold of me, and I'll do whatever I can to take care of you. Thanks.